Free software versus open source software. What do these terms mean and is there a difference? That's the topic for the day. So free software versus open source software, which is the correct term? Well, they're both correct because essentially they mean the same thing. Free software and open source software, essentially two different terms, but they describe exactly the same thing. They both describe a certain kind of software and the licenses around that software, but they're really describing the same subset of software. So why the two different terms? Well, it's because they originated at two different points in history. So free software predates open source software. Free software came around uh, really as a popular term back in the 70s and then into the 80s with Richard Stallman founding the GNU Project and then later the Free Software Foundation and really starting the whole free software movement. Really, Richard Stallman and the Free Software Foundation describe or define free software as having four essential freedoms. They describe the four pillars of freedom, which are basically this. To be free software, you have to have the freedom to deploy the software for any use case. You have to have the freedom to study how the software works and modify it. You have to have the freedom to freely redistribute the software. And you have to have the freedom to enhance the performance of the software, basically hack on it, <laughs> and then share those modifications you made with the rest of the world. So those are basically your four essential freedoms for free software. Now the FSF, the Free Software Foundation, they really emphasize that free software is not limited to non-commercial use. When they talk about free software, they are not talking about free as in cost. They are talking about free as in freedom. That is why they call it free software. It has nothing to do with cost. And this is where things get confusing because in the English language, free really has one meaning to most of us. When we talk about something being free, we're talking about it being free as in monetary cost. We're not talking about it being free as in freedom. So it, the term is really, really confusing to native English speakers. When you tell somebody that's not aware of the free software movement that, hey, I'm using free software, they 99.9% .9 of the time are going to assume you're talking about you're running free as in cost software. Now some of the people that support the Free Software Foundation and like the idea of free software have a problem with that name. They understand that that name is confusing and some free software advocates have actually taken to calling free software Libre software because it's a better definition. Well it's still kind of a poor definition again to English speakers because Libre is not a word we use commonly in the English language. So I mean free software doesn't accurately describe what we're really talking about, but Libre is a word most people are going to have no idea what that even means, Libre software. So that's part of the problem. Free software, that term, is confusing. Along comes the open source crowd. So Linux comes around, the Linux kernel, in the early 90s, and then we have all the, the creation of all the GNU slash Linux distributions. Linux, as an operating system and as a kernel, becomes very popular very quickly and a lot of companies jump on the Linux bandwagon and the free software bandwagon and they really want to make money really off of Linux but other free software as well. Well can you imagine the confusion in those days when you go to pitch your ideas to a company and instead of talking about open source software like we could now you know you describe this software as free software. That was the only term we had, free software. I want to talk to you about, you know, employing more free software in your company. And naturally, that had a lot of negative connotations in the business world because when you tell somebody that, you know, you want them to run free software, they naturally think free as in cost. So they think cheap software, right? Zero cost software. They think bad software <laughs> is really what they think. So in in those days in the 90s, you know, a group of people, uh, starting with Eric Raymond and others, uh, decided to come up with a new term to describe free software. They liked the idea of free software, the, you know, the four pillars and everything about the free software movement, but they did not like the term free software because when they tried to pitch it to people, 
they got negative reactions. So they were trying to come up with something else to accurately, more accurately describe what this software really is. And that is how they created the term open source. And quite frankly, it is a better name. Open source software is just better branding than free software. The business world liked it a lot better. You go to pitch open source software to a company and yeah, yeah, I like the idea that, you know, that the source code is open and that you have this open development model. It really tells me all about, you know, what this software really is, where free software doesn't really describe anything to me that I would be interested in as a business person. Now, open source software, there is a foundation behind open source called the Open Source Initiative, and they actually have a definition for open source software, kind of like the Free Software Foundation has a definition or free software. They have the four essential pillars of free software. The Open Source Initiative has 10 criteria for open source software. So they have, you know, the similar criteria actually to free software. Things like you have to be able to freely redistribute the software. The source code has to be publicly available. The software can be modified and distributed in a different format from the original. The software should not discriminate. The software should not restrict the usage of other software, etc. So Naturally, when you see those definitions, those two different definitions, free software, open source software, they kind of describe the same thing, right? They're essentially the same thing. So the term free software came first, open source software came much later, and the term open source they needed to create because of what they saw as a deficiency in free software. They saw free software as a term very limiting. When you go and pitch free software to a business or potential new software users, new clients, you know, they got negative reactions. So they needed something different. So they came up with open source, open source software. And open source, because of the name, really emphasizes the development model of free software. Open source software is all about the collaborative development model that the source code is open. Everybody can work on it. So it really emphasizes practicality. You know, the practical benefits of this software where free software is really a social philosophy, a moral philosophy. It is very idealistic. And this is the reason why the term open source is really more palatable to the corporate world. That's why in the corporate world, all you hear about is open source software. They don't use the term free software. It, they, they don't care about freedom. Freedom is not why they use this stuff. They use open source software because the code's available, everybody can work on it, the collaborative effort, you know, those reasons. They're, they're not in it for the same reasons that Richard Stallman and the free software crowd are in this. So, free software, open source software. Does it really matter which name you use? No, not really. Well, it kind of does because different words convey different meanings. Different words convey different ideas. Uh, Actually, yeah, they, they convey different ideas. They basically mean the same thing, but they really emphasize different things. Free software, you know, when we talk about free software and free programs, and we're really emphasizing freedom. We're em emphasizing the value of your freedom, your rights, your basic human rights to run free software and modify free software and everything like that. So we're all about this moral high ground when we're talking about free software. Open source software, really talking about the development model, is much more pragmatic in that aspect. It's talking more about the code and the program. Hopefully, we're going to make better software having open source software. Where the free software movement is not really emphasizing the fact we could have better software if we just use free software, but they really emphasize the freedom aspect of using that software. So the free software crowd will tell you that if you value freedom, if freedom is the primary reason why you use this stuff, you really should use the term free software and not open source software because free software emphasizes freedom. Now, to minimize misunderstandings, a lot of people really don't want to get into the debate free software, open source software. So many people have come to this kind of middle ground. And this is one that I subscribe to. I often just call this kind of software free and open source software, or FOSS, F-O-S-S. -S. That's typically what I do. I just call it free and open source software. I don't try to differentiate free software from open source software. I just kind of lump them all together, right? Uh, I guess you could say I, I kind of ride the fence here. You know, I'm not, I'm not picking one side or the other. I'm Switzerland when it comes to this debate. 
A big reason I like to use the term free and open source software is I think it's the most accurate description because it places emphasis on freedom, which the free software account wants to do, and the emphasis on the development model, the open source-ness of this software. So free and open source software, that's the term I use most of the time. I think it, it, it works. It kind of rolls off the tongue and it, it, there's less confusion with saying free and open source software than just saying free software. Like if I'm complaining to somebody that my computer at work, which runs Windows, you know, has all this free software that came pre-bundled and it's a ton of ads and pop-ups that annoy me all day. And then I tell the same person, hey, I got a Linux computer at home and I run a bunch of free software on it. You know, somebody that doesn't know the difference is going to think free software on that Windows computer that's annoying him with all the ads. Free software on his Linux computer. Is he getting a bunch of ads on his Linux machine? No, I'm talking about two different kinds of free software, but free has got two different meanings. It's just weird. Free and open source software really solves a lot of different problems. So you have these three camps of people. You have the free software people, the open source software people, and then people like me, the free and open source software people. Three terms basically mean essentially the same thing. Slight differences on the emphasis of what they're trying to, to emphasize, the ideology behind those terms. But these camps really don't see each other as enemies. Richard Stallman and the free software guys don't see all the open source guys, Linus Torvalds and Eric Raymond, as the enemy. You know, they're, they don't have, it's not like some... Biggie and Tupac. This isn't an East Coast, West Coast kind of beef, right? Uh, they have a difference of opinion, but they are not enemies because it's just two different terms, but basically promoting the same kind of software, free and open source software. They don't see each other as enemies. They know who the true enemy out there is. Proprietary software. Before I go, I do need to thank a few special people. This show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, the other Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Jack, Leor, Mitchell, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sam, Tony, and Willie. They are the producers of the show, my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show would not be possible. Also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. A sincere thank you to each and every one of those folks as well. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace. Thank <laughs> you.